Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the UGA Sports Sunday Call-In Show. I'm your host, Paul Meharry, joined by my lovely co-host, Jason Butt. And then we'll see if Ben Bachman gets here. I know he's the uh, life of the party, but as always, running late. But uh, he'll, he'll be here at some point. But just like being here at some point, guys, Mike Bobo is now back in Athens. We're going to talk about that a ton First off, we want to thank you guys for watching, listening to us on your podcast, uh, maybe on your way to work on Monday morning. If you're watching us live, though, go ahead and shout out in the chat uh, that you are watching us. We'll put you up on the screen. And then if, you feel, if you're feel feeling froggy, guys, you guys can uh, join in live via audio and video or just audio. We can get you up here and we want to hear from you guys. And also, uh, Yeo Bergs has already done it. So he's watching from Ontario, Canada. If anything, guys, we want to know where you're watching us from. So put that into the chat. Which uh, city in Ontario? Yo, yo, Bergs. Oh yeah, there's more. Yeah, there's more cities. Well, I mean, Ontario is just the province. Yeah, you're right. You're so. right. Yeah, I, I feel I feel dumb. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and guys, don't forget the Sunday Call-in Show is presented by the Rogue Shop, guys. If you need anything related to uh, CBD, anything of that nature, use Bulldogs Ten, get ten percent off your order of Rogue Shop. So. Uh, yeah, we we'll, uh, we will get going. Jeff Hightop says, watching from a Holiday Inn. I don't know if he's lying or not, guys. Uh, Andy Stowe, big time family of the show, says, uh, hanging out in Royston, go dogs. And uh, there you go, Waterloo. Waterloo, okay. Made the phone. They made the BlackBerry phone there, Jason, in Waterloo. Ontario. That's that's impressive. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, let's get back to the topic at hand, though, because uh, Mike Bobo's back in town, Jason, and. Initial, we do this, you know, every show, right? At least on the post game of reaction show, you come on, I say, Hey, man, give me your initial thoughts, right? I just want to know your initial thoughts. I'm sure you've done it probably on the daily recap, but what are your initial thoughts of Mike Bobo coming back? We'll dive into it super deep, but initial thoughts. I think it's fine. It's safe. Um, you know what you're getting, and you have a seasoned play caller who on paper should be able to call a pretty good version of what Todd Munkin has brought to town. Uh, they, uh, um, let's say Brent Rollins did a good job in kind of illustrating what to, uh, what to expect Mike Bobo to, 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 uh, to do when, when it comes to calling this offense. And really a lot of the concepts were what he was doing outside of the play action element, um, you know, in his time at Auburn and South Carolina over the last few years before he came back to Georgia as a, as an analyst, so um, I, I don't anticipate much to change, and I think that's by design. Clearly, the, the main takeaway is, and, and obviously, uh, you know, the, the uh, Rayola, the quarterback commit. Oh, I'm sorry, not commit. Oh, <laughs> the quarterback Jason, recruit. Yes. Yeah, the recruit. Whoa, 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 whoa. I know, that's getting whoa. way ahead of myself. The quarterback yeah, that's recruit. Gonna get, that's getting clipped. Yeah, I know. The recruit, he, uh, he, he basically gave it away on uh, one of those Rumors versus Facts episodes where, you know, if Monken were to leave, it was going to be Bobo. And uh, so, so yeah, I, I think Kirby strategically had this plan in place. If Monken were to leave, Bobo was always going to be the guy in waiting. And it's because they they come from a same the same mind. They they can run the same stuff. Uh, it, it's a it's a safe hire. It's a like minded individual. And I think what helps is is Mike Bobo likes to recruit and will do more on that front than Todd Munkin did. And I think that's an element that uh, that can't be understated enough because uh, for as great as Munkin was as, as a coordinator and, and he played it right. I was just, I know I've, I've kind of gone long on this answer. He played wow. it right in the sense of he came in, he did a few years at Georgia and then he got out with two national titles to where he's like, he's going to be a legend forever. He's going to be fans are going to think of him as one of the greatest offensive coordinators in program history. And, and rightfully so honestly, yet uh, he wasn't, he didn't stick around long enough to have a couple of seasons where, where the fans uh, decided to turn on him. So uh, Monk had played this incredibly right from that perspective uh, because, as you know, and why Mike Bobo was such a hot topic, it took him a little while to get comfortable being an offensive coordinator, and there are a lot of fans who uh, I, I don't think could let go of some of their struggles early on in his tenure the first time he had this job at Georgia. Yeah, uh, I think – 
and I don't want to speak for the fans. I want to get your guys' input as much as possible. So if you're watching, let us know on your initial thoughts on Bobo. But I think this is more of a they're sad Munkins leaving, not so much that it's we're we're sad Mike Bobo is offensive coordinator. Does that make sense? I think it's more like, man, we really thought we had. Oh, a sure. Yeah. With Munkin. I think I, I think that's wishful. That had to have always been a little bit of wishful thinking because this guy, this guy's ultimate dream, Todd Munkin, that is, it was to be an NFL offensive coordinator. And I think Georgia probably had the best chance to keep him around for a little longer uh, just just because of the situation he was in. He was going to be comfortable. But the uh, the fact that like he could be taken away in April to do some recruiting or something like even though he's got one position group that that sort of stuff uh, really bothered him and and uh, I, when you're in the NFL all you do is coach you have your off season you have your you have way more downtime uh, the the trade off in the NFL level as we talked about a couple weeks ago. Uh, is you have some you have some characters who who want to give you a hard time because they're getting paid a lot of money and they don't want to put up with you know some uh, some teaching moments uh, quite well, like some think, some of the college Munkin, kids. I think Munkin kind of fits that role better, honestly. Like, and he's more of an NFL guy to me anyway than a than a college. I, I, I he's somewhere in between because I yeah. I don't think he's a this uh, he, he's definitely not a new school buddy buddy type of coach. Which the um, NFL has turned to a, a right. Coach. Oh, the younger the younger coaches have have made it that because you almost have to uh, in terms of trying to build relationships to keep people happy, uh, and it's uh, it's not necessarily something I I think I would have ever wanted to happen, but it's just kind of the nature of the beast. Uh, uh, players have more power, and, which is funny because the NFL of all the pro leagues, the players have the least power. But they still have had more. They still have more power than they they ever had before in the NFL, and therefore they can get away with certain things like that. And um, and, and coaches and uh, are are often beholden to these players. And so that's the only downside Munkin's walking into. He's going to get months off in the off season. You know, when when the NFL's down, it's down. But when it's on, it's just as busy as college football is. I mean, th- that that's really the one thing. The one takeaway. Uh, that I have learned over the years with co- college coaching and pro coaching is that college coaching is somehow more difficult because of the recruiting aspect. And you wouldn't think that because you would think the pro level would be the, sure. the top of, of the mountain when it comes to, to coaching. And those jobs are, uh, um, they're harder to get, but they're way more coveted. I think by a lot of uh, John Lilly was a good example. Uh, you know, he's not really, do you know if John Lilly's coaching anywhere? I mean, wasn't he at uh, lost the Rams last time? Yeah, he, he was at the Rams not long after his stint at Georgia. And, but he, I remember he was an example of, you know, he was done with college after 15 uh, and, and Kirby was coming in. And he was he was like, I, w- I want to keep coaching, but it's got to be in the NFL. It's just such a grind and you uh, sacrifice think, your think, family. Uh, I think he is back. He's back at uh, North Carolina. He's, he's at North Carolina. Wow. Carolina. Yeah, I, I just I remember at the time uh, – he, because I ran, I remember running into him at the Senior Bowl, and it was re- it was really brief, and and it was I, I'm really trying to get an NFL job, and it was it was for that reason, and so for Munkin, that's that's great. Uh, the one the one thing you have to wonder is, you know, how long will he last in the NFL? The NFL, it's you know. So here's you know. Munkin's. I want to give you this, Jason. Here's Munkin's coaching career. He started in 1989 as a graduate assistant at Grand Valley State. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 16 different jobs since then. Yeah. He has only stayed at a job longer than two years twice. And that was at Jacksonville Jaguars 2007 to 2010 as a wide receivers coach and way back at Eastern Michigan 93 to 97. So I think, you know, if, if a track record is any indication, most of his stops are two years most max you got him for georgia you you technically had him for three at georgia right 2020 2020 yeah 2020 21 22 so you know but he's 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 a role he's you know he he rolls around what's funny though is uh my best friend was in vegas for a super bowl and he was leaving out monday and he texted me a picture of munkin he's like dude munkin's here i'm like what he texted me a picture. He's got a Georgia hat on, but he said he walked by him and it sounded like he was talking like really, you know, big business, if you will. And then come to find out the next morning, uh, they announced him as the Ravens. OC, 
I think it'll be interesting though. I I feel bad for Bobo though, in a sense that he is stepping in behind him, right? And Bobo has history at Georgia, where Andy Stowe says right here, you know, some people hate Bobo though. It's wild to me. He had excellent offenses when he was here. The defense would give up 40, and somehow it was Bobo's fault. South Carolina, man. The the 20 was it 2014 South Carolina where it was like 38, 33, 35 or something. And and people wanted to blame Bobo for losing that game because of the uh the uh the, the Hudson Mason pass, the play action I was called intentional grounding at the, oh, the five yeah, yard line. Yeah. Yeah. It was just like they wanted to blame him for that one play. The defense gave up 38 or whatever. Yeah, it was. 38 to 35. That's a that's a pretty good memory there. I dude, I remember Georgia had as as all everybody watching. I mean, it, everybody remembers those games where you're just like, Are you kidding me? But you know, that that wasn't Bobo's fault. I mean uh, he got blamed for a, a lot of those moments, and then when things were going incredibly well in those last few years, you know, nobody would say a word or give Bobo any credit. And then it seemed like any chance, you know, and it's, it's that vocal minority. I think most people understand and appreciate Mike Bobo, like most rational fans. So uh, how? Do, okay, so that's um, what I was going to ask you. Does this change, like game one, right? They're playing. Who, who is it? Ball State or uh, it's not Ball State? They have a game before that. Georgia does. Let me pull it up. Uh, Tennessee Martin, you, uh, That's Tennessee right. Martin. So if Bobo somehow comes <laughs> out and three and outs on the first drive, run, run, pass, like, are there going to be booze? No. Okay. No. All right. I, I, I just, I want to, I, I Bobo's wanna, got wanna, some grace uh, after the last two years. I think, uh, I think this fan base is pretty happy right now. Uh, all things considered. I mean, but you know, you, you, you had to, you, you knew the day was going to come that Todd Munkin was going to leave. I, I think a lot of people wish it wouldn't have been this soon. But it was going to come one way or the other, and so it was either you know go find a, a new guy on the outside or or keep it you know when something's working you don't want to to reinvent the wheel and so Mike Bobo is the perfect replacement I shouldn't say perfect replacement but he's a he's an ideal replacement to uh, to keep the you know keep the machine running as best as you think you can keep it running based on hey he was he was here this past year. He's got familiarity uh, with Kirby Smart dating all the way back to when they played together. Um, you know, very like-minded. Uh, you know, he's had a lot of success as an offensive coordinator previously at Georgia. And, and, and uh, you know, as, as I said, Brent Rollins and his piece pointed out, they, they, he and Monken aren't really that far off uh, schematically and I mean, what they believe and what they want to do. So Bo is going to have to find him a uh, Quavon Hicks though, with a crazy face mask to run uh, his fullback dives and things like that. So there's no fullback on the roster right now. That's see, that's Kirby. That's the other thing is, right. is this is really the Georgia offense. And remember Kirby came in and he said, I'm not a fullback guy. And, <laughs> and yeah, they had, they would have the fullback here and there and whatnot. Like, yeah. uh, but, but yeah, th you've seen it kind of be phased out over the years too. It's uh Kirby Kirby dictates what he wants the coordinators to do, and that's on offense as well. I think with Munkin uh, more so than uh, uh, you know Cheney, and then of course Coley when Coley took over, uh, you know it seemed like Munkin ended up with all the freedom in the world because I mean he was lights out. Why would you want to interrupt uh, you know anything that he he was doing? But the, at the end of the day, the head coach sets the style that he wants to see, and then the coordinators have to to uh, craft a, a game plan off of that. Speaking of crafting a game plan, let's bring in Ben. I'm normally here on time, but sometimes I'm a little late. Jean Jacket, Choppy Bachman. Uh, what's going on, bud? What's going on? Bringing back the fullback? Yeah. Ooh. Well, we were just talking about uh, we you know, the Georgia-South Carolina game 2014, and the last touchdown Georgia scored in that game was a one-yard run by Quavon Hicks. So, you know, might need to might need to bring the fullback back, Ben. But uh, how you been, bud? I'd be good about yourself, Paul. Good. You going to date tonight or something? Why you... No. No. Just, <laughs> I like the jean jacket look. Just okay. Like well, it. it looks good. It looks good. We're we're just we're you know since you're late to the party, no big deal, right? We'll we'll get over it. Uh, we appreciate you spending your time with us, though. Uh, oh my God! On Sunday night. You guys have no idea how many shots Paul's going to take for this one occurrence. <laughs> but no, we're talking, we're talking about Bobo here, and I got Jason's initial thoughts and and uh, Larry Hogue in the chat. I'm going to put it up here. We're going that's going to be our next talking point. But I'd like a quick overview of uh, of Bobo and uh, mm -hmm. Munkin leaving. Right, Munkin's coming to your team up there in, in Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So one team in the NFL that uses a ton of fullback is now going to get no seat with mm -hmm. no fullback. And the reverse, which is why I brought that up. But in reality, I don't think the fullback really matters. 
But I think that this hire is very interesting because a lot of people, and I had a buddy who went to South Carolina who texted me after this happened. He was like, oh, Bobo's awful. I want people to realize the situations he was in at South Carolina and Auburn. One, Harson, that was a sinking ship. He didn't coach that many games there to begin with. I don't know how you could put that on him. South Carolina, he was coaching in the COVID year, his first year back as an OC since 2014. So it had been six years since he was a sole offensive coordinator. And in the SEC, he had a grad assistant as his quarterback. I just want people to think, oh, about yeah, it. you're right. Assistant. That was that was as that his year. quarterback yeah. in a COVID year where the head coach got fired in the middle of the year. Which, uh, which is now your defensive coordinator, mind you. I mean, if their position – I do not trust either of them as a head coach. No, I, I do not trust Will Muschamp as a head coach. I trust him as a recruiter. I trust him as a defensive play caller. I do not trust him managing a program and helping with the offense and things of that nature. But as a defensive coach, as a recruiter, his resume is great. Same with Bobo. Bobo's resume is really good with recruiting on offense. He's a better recruiter than Munkin. That's the one upgrade in this, for sure, is he's a more tenacious recruiter. He's got the connections in Georgia to recruit and he's shown that he wants to recruit and is good at it. In my opinion, you got Matthew Stafford. He recruited Ravens goat, Marlon Brown. Hey. Uh, and a bunch of other people. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so I, I look at it as, you know, he's an upgrade in recruiting. And also when you look at him now, he actually was very integral with the quarterbacks and he sat and was in the decision room with Munkin a lot of the time. And obviously they picked each other's brains a lot. And I think him now having – there's a playbook and there's a system that's in place. He's got to call it and make tweaks. That's what it's going to be. He's going to make his little tweaks and, and adjustments to the playbook. But it's not going to be much of, of a big change. He's just going to call the game and be the play caller this time compared to Munkin. Now, do I think Munkin's a better OC? Do I trust him more? 100%. But I still think Mike Bobo is a Georgia guy, which now this staff at some point – like the next couple of defensive coaches, if they were to leave, I mean, just look at the Georgia alums list because that's who they're going to hire because I think right. they have like five or six UGA alums on staff, which I think is a pretty cool thing, to be honest with you, to say, you know, we're just a Georgia staff full of former players here. But I think that Munkin's hire, I really don't think schematically we're going to see big changes. However, the one thing that Mike Bobo maybe he doesn't have on Todd Munkin is, to me, Todd Munkin called his best games in the big games. Ooh. He called a phenomenal game against Ohio State. TCU, even though that was just a blowout, I mean, he had them schemed up. I mean, him just to scheme alone, beat TCU by 40, 30, 40 points. He, in the big games, called his best game. And he did it with – he's made Stetson Bennett a Heisman finalist, Brandon Whedon a first-round pick. I don't know how how you make him a first-round pick. Jamarcus Russell is the number one pick. That guy was eating whole KFC buckets. You have <laughs> Nick Mullins at Southern Miss made the NFL and he was the head coach. Jameis Winston, a top three passer in, in the NFL, stealing chicken legs or lobster legs or whatever. Crab legs. Like this Crab is, legs. I mean, lobster legs. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, Munkin's history with quarterbacks and just play calling. He, he has a better track record. But I think with Bobo, you have familiarity. He was a Georgia quarterback. who's friends with Kirby. And he's been in the building with Munkin. So I don't think it's going to be that big of a drop-off. But you certainly would have liked to see Munkin stay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's kind of everything. Uh, we've got some comments here. Larry brought up a good point. He said, the starting quarterback will determine Bobo's fate. We're going to touch on that, guys. I want to touch on these other comments first. We're going to come back to that, though. Uh, SMR says, uh, yeah, I don't get the Bobo hate. He was the second best OC we have had based on numbers at the very least. Uh, Larry again says, Bobo learned from the best. As long as he can check his ego and not very far from Munkin's playlist, he'll be okay with the right quarterback. Uh, SMR said, here's Motel 6, man. We, you missed that earlier, but good to have you here, Ben. Oh, you, and, uh, oh you're taking jazz to me when I'm not No, here. we did not. We did not. No, we did not. Jeff Hydehoff said he was staying at a Holiday Inn, and then he said, oh, maybe it's a Motel 6. It was Jeff. It was not me. I didn't ask for it. Oh, Jeff man. Uh, I'm going to get Paul back see, I'm but then, teaming up with Roddy to get look, Paul. It's, it's going to be bad, buddy. Look, look, <laughs> SMR said, happy to see the crew back. He was missing us and, and glad to have everybody back. And then, then you know, so we're, we're good. Guys, this is the biggest question, though, kind of moving this forward. Going back to Larry's comment, the starting quarterback will determine Bobo's fate. And where I saw this right here. This is such a good point. 
Jason W. Brings up, he says, would Bo have chose Mathis to start in 2020? How is that missed by Munkin when we all saw how bad it was from the start of the Arkansas game? So That was more of Kirby, I think, than Munkin. And they kind of had to. They yeah. kind of had to. But they try- But here's, here's the thing with that, though. They tried to push Stetson away. Stetson didn't. He was resilient. He stayed around, got two national championships. That's true. You know, everybody wants to rag on Bobo because Cam Newton, you know, he looked at him and said, hey, you're a tight end, son. He's, he obviously wasn't. He made the incorrect call there. Uh, passing up on Deshaun Watson for Bryce Ramsey. The incorrect that call. That was ugly. That was ugly. That's really bad. But at the same time, Munkin started Mathis, and if Stetson Bennett wasn't so resilient and the, you know, I don't give a attitude, then what would have happened to Georgia football then? You know, so everybody has their flaws is what I'm getting at. But, 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 but. The big thing here is the starting quarterback will determine Bobo's fate. New starting quarterback, Mike Bobo is the OC. How does this change things, Jason? Well, I think uh, you uh, you have more of a competition than uh, maybe somebody like me would have thought otherwise with Todd Munkin. I would have thought, you know, you go in, Kirk, Kirby's not going to say anything, and they're going to play it like a competition, but you would think that Carson Beck would be your, your lead dog. Um. You know, a lot of people have pointed just through speculation, um, you know, Gunnar Stockton. What does this mean for him? I know two weeks ago, our, our boy uh, Ben Bogman here was uh, kind of, kind of, you know, putting it out there. What about what he about was. Gunnar Stockton? He was. And uh, I think with with Mike Bobo, this, this might change things a little bit. And it might give a guy like Gunnar Stockton an extra look. It might give him a better chance. Um, uh, and I hate that because not because yeah. I don't want Gunnar Stockton to take the job. It's just would be that Ben was right, even though he probably shouldn't have been. He predicted something. <laughs> that, he predicted something that was. I mean, Paul has this back tribalism because he interviewed uh, the grandmother who's a friend of the show, friend she of is. the show. She is Miss Carolyn. So, yes, I, I, I'm on. I've said this for a while because Gunnar Stockton. Um, last I checked, he was doing pretty well at the end of the year on the scout team and everything. I just think that you can't write him off. It was it, I wasn't saying that Gunner's the favorite. I was just saying that you can't r- write Gunner off because I think that so many people at this point are like, it's Beck, Gunner's the backup, Brock's going to transfer. I just feel like everyone's saying that. And that's not the case when you have a whole spring and you have a fall. And I know that COVID – happening kind of through a wrench into everything that 2020 year but remember it was going to be jamie newman and then oh jt's in oh jt's not healthy yet so oh who's your quarterback are they going to run with beck they still didn't know jt was healthy or not they go with dwan mathis and then dwan mathis literally a half into or less than a half into the first game he's gone and it's stetson there was literally four different quarterbacks and a freshman that they all think it could have been in the 2020 year so to think that an open quarterback competition with three guys who are all highly touted, especially one of these guys who had a past relationship with Bobo, who, who Bobo landed at South Carolina. That was he right. goes South Carolina, his first priority. Oh, I know this family. I know him since he was a kid. I know him really well. I've coached people close to him. And now he's got a decent chance to start. You're not telling me that there's not a chance now that Gunnar Stockton's got a decent chance at this thing. I still think I would lean back ends up getting the job or at least starts the season week one. But Gunnar eventually being the starting quarterback this this upcoming year would not shock me in the least. Yeah, I mean, I think you look at it, uh, Jason, kind of now it's a – now it's – I think it's an open competition, you know, I, I think – and there's nothing more fun in the off season, Jason. You know this. You were the beat writer for a long time, than a offensive or defensive coordinator change, and then especially an offensive coordinator change and a new quarterback in the same yeah. year. I mean that that is like prime time, and you're coming off of two national championships. This is like because everybody's everybody's throwing attention your way at this point oh, yeah. as the UGA program. It's not just you know what do we do to right the ship. I, I could think about my whole childhood uh, growing up you know, outside of Athens. And, uh, and it was always, you know, first thing it was next year's our year. And then it was, well, we'll get this quarterback and this quarterback's going to take us to the promised land. And, you know, it turns out a former walk-on ended up being the guy to do it in the most unreal fashion, all starting with uh, Justin Fields transferring and the dominoes that kind of, kind of went from there. And, 
uh, and now, like you said, you have a new quarterback, and it's the, the conversation is totally different. And uh, I, I think the one person who probably, you know, I, I would think that the one person who who would isn't interested in this topic at all is is the head coach. You know, I think he would rather have a guy who he could he could uh, rely on right now and not worry about having to go through a spring, not have to play games with to do everything he can to keep Brock Vandegrift happy so that Brock Vandegrift doesn't transfer before the fall. So they can't even really have a really, – they, they, the coaches can't even really settle the competition before the spring or as it. the spring they ends because you have to keep it open in order to keep it. all three guys on the roster. So uh, it's great it. for, I think, a, a readership, uh, a fan base that wants to learn more I think for for the head coach, it's uh, gonna gonna be a little bit uneasy for the next uh, however many months it is till you know early September. Uh, we've got Random point, real quick. That well, Jason kind of brought up. wants to come in here, Ben. So go ahead. I was just gonna say he brought up like Justin Fields and the Dominoes leaving. Justin Fields leaving the program, and he's great. He probably would have been the most talented quarterback and the best quarterback. It's, it's nuts, Sack isn't it? It's, it's absolutely nuts. But guess what? <laughs> Him leaving was the biggest blessing for Georgia. Ever because if he doesn't leave, Stetson doesn't come in, quarterbacks in the team doesn't get built the same way. Who knows if you have two national championships? Because he would have been three and out. Stetson's maybe never here. You don't know who your quarterback is. Maybe still would have been good enough to win you those titles. Maybe you wouldn't know who your quarterback you is either. So him leaving, which is the one thing that Kirby got bashed for. That was the one thing. I, I, ba- I mean, I bashed him. We got for the it. defense, yeah. but Fields leaves. Oh man, Kirby, look at he, he messed up Fields from. The long run, it got him two titles. It's so lucky, though. I mean, it was That's incredibly nuts. lucky. <laughs> but it was lucky, but it's it worked out. It, they it, not, it worked it, out. Jason, they're not yeah. taking Stetson if Fields. They don't know. That's the thing. Like, he, like Stetson well, goes and plays. Yeah. If Justin Fields doesn't leave, Stetson's at Louisiana. Yeah, with Billy Napier. Yeah, <laughs> and then he's he also to Florida. <laughs> right, right. Which also is domino there. But speaking of, uh, let's get a, let's get another name in here, Matthew. What's going on, man? At Edom Dogs. What's going on? What's up, what's up? I just uh, wanted to get on the conversation about the quarterbacks here. Um, You know, I feel like in 2021, as we go back to our first national championship, um, I've been saying this for a long time. I want to get y'all's opinion on this. It didn't really matter what quarterback uh, was put in in 2021. Um, I believe we would have won a national championship either way with that historic defense. Uh, if you look back to last year, we really kind of did need Stetson Bennett uh, to, step, to step up uh, in big games, which he did, Tennessee, LSU, and in the playoffs. He stepped up really good. Um, I just want to know, uh, coming into next year, uh, you know, we reloaded on defense. We're bringing back a good offensive line. We're stacked at the wide, probably the most stacked Georgia's ever been at the wide receiver position, tight end university. Um, is it really going to matter who Mike Bobo puts in, um, in y'all's opinion? And um, part two to that question is, whoever he puts in, do you think, I mean, obviously Mike Bobo can um, – develop these guys uh either one that he picks i want y'all's opinion on that well before you get our opinion matthew what's your opinion on it well uh my opinion on that would be uh i think mike bobo he look he's had aaron murray matthew stafford um he's had uh some good quarterbacks to uh come into university of georgia do really good uh he's developed some really really good quarterbacks um I think it really won't matter um, if he puts Gunnar Stockton in, if he puts um, uh, insert your quarterback here. Uh, you know, I think Carson Beck probably will be the starter because he has probably the most experience. But uh, I don't think it's really going to matter because I think we're going to have another historic uh, defense, and I think we're going to have an, an an amazing offense. Jason, it's a matter. Yeah, I mean, I I think it does matter. You have to have a quarterback who who can run the offense, make sure you're in the right calls. I mean, it's the little things. It's not necessarily – he doesn't have to be a, a stat-producing machine, kind of like you alluded to with Stetson in 2021. You know, he wasn't putting up big numbers uh, game in, game out. 
but what he did was he, he ensured that Georgia minimized mistakes for the most part. When they ran the ball, he was unselfish. Or, or, or when they needed to run the ball, he was unselfish. He didn't look to, to make plays himself. Um, the defense obviously helped out. Uh, you know, it, you look back, you mentioned uh, all the quarterbacks Bobo recruited. Uh, if they had defenses year in, year out, the way that uh, – the, the way that these last two defenses have performed for Georgia, then Mark Rick would have won a couple of national titles. I mean, the 2012 defense is the one that really sticks out as, as maybe the best. And that one in the uh, so 2007 was good. And then 2002, 2002 was really good too. But 2012 was, was yeah, I just remember remarkable. And, um, and they came close and that was the one that they, that they came to closest. They, they went to Alabama or went all the way to the wire with Alabama in the SEC championship. The winner of that game, didn't, you know, Alabama won. Georgia would have done the same to Notre Dame. So, um, to, to me, it matters because uh, the defense can take care of its side of the ball, but if you don't have the right quarterback, you know, you got you still got to score points. And in today's day and age of football, I mean, look at what happened. Uh, Georgia had a hiccup against Missouri. They needed Stetson Bennett and the offense to step up and rally them. You look at the Ohio State game. They don't have Stetson Bennett in that moment. Uh, do they do they still win that game? I go all the way back to 2021 in the championship. They don't have Stetson Bennett. Do they beat Alabama? I don't think so. So I think it really does matter. I'll, I'll turn it to Ben now. Yeah, I think it definitely matters. But I think one big thing is like the personnel. Like I think this upcoming year, they should be phenomenal on offense, regardless of the quarterback. You're going to be better at receiver, in my opinion, than this past year. Your offensive line is basically four guys who were starters because I kind of count Mims in that regard. So you have four of your five starters locked on the offensive line that are experienced. Your running backs are all back except for one. You might need a guy replacing Kenny as a pass catcher. So their offense is still going to return guys and be great. So for this upcoming season, I also think their defense is going to be better. It's so many freshmen. It's, I've never seen so many freshmen and sophomores play in my life. And they got Ballard and Laster and all these guys. So like – I look and I say the quarterback, I don't think this upcoming season is going to have to do as much um, compared to last year. I don't. And also, I think the schedule's so easy outside of Tennessee on the road. I think the schedule's so easy. But I think, like, you guys were talking about previous years. Yeah, I don't know if they win a national championship the first time without Stetson. And also, I don't know if they win it last year because do they beat Ohio State? Stetson put up 400 yards passing in that game against Ohio State to get them there. So – is Stetson necessarily the most talented quarterback we've ever seen and all that? No, but he's a really good college quarterback. And the great college quarterbacks, they they win. And I don't know if any of these three guys are great college quarterbacks or NFL talents or not yet. And I think as it pertains to this up-and-coming battle, you got three guys that I think fit three different categories. I think Beck's the most experienced, which might give him a leg up. I think Brock, even though a lot of people think he's the most likely to transfer and lose, I think he's the most talented and gifted. And I think, Bo, I mean, Gunner fits with Bobo the most. He fits the system and has that relationship with the OC the most that he can mesh well in that regard. So you've got three different things. What do you want to rely on? Do you want to rely on the experience? Do you want to rely on the potential talent and gifts? Or do you want to rely on the guy who fits? And that's going to be what's going to determine this battle and what's going to determine the upcoming season. Because if they get good quarterback play, they're winning the title again next year. Yep. Now, I know um, Kirby Smart stated something, you know, about wanting a more uh, mobile quarterback. And I think uh, I think Gunner uh, – not Gunner. I think Brock uh, would probably be the best fit as far as, like, um, getting out of the pocket, um, extending plays with his legs. Uh, what do you all think about that? Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, um, I, I think you could you could uh, you know really either him or Gunner in terms of uh, you know being a little more mobile. They also like to have two different types of quarterbacks on the roster. So if one gets hurt, they go to a different type of style type of quarterback. Um, that's why Carson Beck's there. Uh, it's it's different now, obviously, with Bobo. Uh, but Bobo also historically under you know under Mark Rick, he went you know they they ran the drop back passer. You look at um, you know, his track record, it, it was more so the, the prototypical pro style type guy. Um, so it'll be interesting to see Kirby, uh, you know, if, if, Kirby, if they do decide to go with this approach, 
you know, with the success they have with Stetson and they want to go with a guy like whether it's Brock or somebody or, or a gunner who can, you know, extend plays and, and uh, a little bit more mobile than, than what Carson Beck is, um, you know, uh, then uh, I don't know, just be interesting just because we, ha- we haven't seen Bobo at Georgia with that type of quarterback kind of given the green light to run that kind of offense. Um, you know, Aaron Murray extend, you know, he, he, he could do a little bit of that, but he really didn't. Um, you know, they, they were, they were pretty traditional, uh, you know, through all the, all of his years previously at Georgia. So, um, I, uh, personally, I'm just, I'm just really interested to see what he does with this, with, with these quarterbacks. And, uh, you know, if it is in fact gunner, given the history that he's had, uh, with him. So, or, you know, with him to date. Matthew yeah. Brock Mitchell. can move. I think Brock's the most athletic. So if you're looking for a guy who could roll out the most, it is Brock. Brock's probably the fastest. And I said, I think he's the most gifted. Gunner can also do that a bit. I, I think this is the thing that you kind of brought up, Jason, about Bobo's like past history of quarterbacks. I think the game is kind of changing now again. When you look at the NFL, you have Hurts, you have Mahomes, you have all these guys getting drafted in the first round. You have this past year, Bryce Young. I mean, if you want to include Stetson in that mix, um, Richardson, Levis can move. All these quarterbacks are mobile. They're not guys that you could deem runners, but they're mobile. You're not just a statue. Outside of Mac Jones, there's not been a top-end talented quarterback in college football outside of Mac Jones who's been a statue. So you need a guy who has at least some mobility now. You can't just have a statue back there. I think Beck has kind of underrated athletic ability because if he's just a firm statue, those guys, there aren't many of them anymore that that come out because I think you have to have some level of mobility now at the quarterback position because almost all the quarterbacks go on pro and the top college quarterbacks have some level of it. Mac Jones is kind of an exception, but I think the Bama – offense with those receivers and everything around him kind of made it pretty easy for him. But outside of him, there's not really that many true statues anymore, quarterback. Matthew, Thank man. you guys for letting me come on. You did a great job, man. If you want to take Ben's spot at any time, just let me know. Hit me up in the DMs. Uh, follow him at eat em, eat em Dogs. There you go. Thank we appreciate you, it, Matthew. Call in some more, man. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you. Oh, man. See, Paul's um, trying to get me fired on air. This, this, this is what I'm dude, talking about. What well, a joke. The problem was, too, my eyes started watering because I was about to sneeze. I was going to mute my mic, but then all it looked, it just looked like I was crying halfway through that. <laughs> <laughs> like getting real emotional about who's going to be the quarterback. John, John Dukes also is uh, countering all this. I mean, he's saying it the sleeper, Jackson Muschamp. Yeah, the sleeper of them all, man. I want Jackson Muschamp. How hey, man. The last time they went with a walk on, right? Yo, how big is Jackson hmm. Muschamp? I got to look this up. I, I'm probably like 6'8. <laughs> six eight two seventy five six six the one, LeBron one, James the quarterback six one one ninety. Speaking of which, for all the people who followed uh, UJ hoops and everything, Anthony Edwards was just the first pick in the All Star draft. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, LeBron took him first. I just saw that come across my screen. So, huh. well, Jackson Muschamp on Georgia's website is six two one ninety. He's a red shirt sophomore. Been around a while, boys. Been around a while. Knows the offense. Just saying. Uh, SMR says, most people say Brock is the most, at, most athletic. Probably true. I think Gunner will be the hardest to bring down. Runs like a running back. I kind of agree with that. He does run more like a bulldog, uh, you know, in, in the sense of like, he's probably not, he's, de- I don't think he's faster than uh, Brock, maybe, but in terms of who I would rather hit, I'd probably rather hit Brock because Gunner just looks like he would. You know, lower a shoulder and like a little Cam Newton in him. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm, I'm not comparing. I'm saying stuff. a little, a little. Yeah. Cam Newton, yeah. A little, a little bit. I don't know. Brock's like the guy. I don't know about the other two, but Brock's like the one quarterback I've seen like under Kirby who like lifts a, like a f like a fuck ton. Like he just stops. whoa whoa whoa. We just there lost goes, our. There goes the monetization. There goes the monetization. Yeah. Dang. I was trying to hold it back. Like don't read three times, I was like, I gotta let it fly at this point. They they know I'm going for it. (laughs) Look, I said don't read on me, and apparently I can't read. It says don't tread on me. Says uh, let's not discuss UJ Mint's basketball bin, please. Uh, Getting beat. I I, I gotta say this about them though. Tom Crean's most wins over four years in a season is 16. Mike White's already at then his first year. It's only two returning players. Yeah, Yeah. and Bama did this in Vanderbilt. Like Bama did this to Vanderbilt a few weeks ago, anyway. And like they're, they're just they're that good. Yeah, like really they, good. they're the Bama's, number one. Bama's turning into a basketball school. Like yeah, yeah. They I gave ice. up on football. They're trash at football. <laughs> they, the they don't have a coach anymore at football, but now basketball. Whew. Yeah, I mean they're that the Bama uh, of basketball at Bama. That that Georgia kind of had NATO's too, man. That's the that's the like. 
That's the part that's just crazy. That Brandon Miller kid, man, he looks like the next Kevin Durant for real. Yeah. He's a top five pick. Yeah, he looks good. Um, but overall, right, I think from reading the, the chat, uh, getting vibes from – I had some friends who were like, dear God, like, you know, like uh, Michael Scott in the office when he's like, no, no, yeah. dear God, no. <laughs> like I had friends like hit, giving me that, you know, uh, how do you say it, GIF or GIF? GIF? It's technically GIF, but everybody calls it GIF. Okay. Um, I know. Don't, don't ask me why. I know I know the um, proper – well, what the original that. usage. I'm just, yeah. I'm just a nerd, the I guess. The goat peanut butter. That is the goats of peanut butter to me. What? Oh, oh, oh Jeff, Jeff, Jeff peanut butter. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I was but, talking about the, the little – Gifts you send to your friends. Oh, the animation. Damn, I thought you guys were talking about Peter Peter Pan. Pan is, oh Peter Lord, Pan. Peter Pan was better than Jeff, though. Yeah, Peter real. Pan is yeah. way better than Jeff. Way. Yeah. Um, no. that went sideways. Thanks, Ben. Um, but I had some friends saying like, "No, dear God, no. Why, why, Bobo? You know." And I've had time to reflect on it because when I first saw it, I was like, "Man, that's." Mm. So oh, it was lazy. I, I don't know if it was lazy, but I was like, man, they couldn't have maybe done a more of a search here. But then when no. I sat back on it, I slept on it. I woke up the next morning. I was like, hey, who better to just keep this in house? Uh, I'm looking at these. What is Goober Grape is better? Is that like the is that the one that, <laughs> the one that's uh, mixed together? Nah, dude, don't tread on me. You you might need to get banned for that. That's disgusting. <laughs> that's absolutely disgusting. Oh, and Andy's Uber's with great. him. He said that's good stuff. I don't know. Is, is that? Yeah. No, that stuff's gross. Um, but I think you just hand it over to Bobo. I wonder, though, and I don't think he's going to have a problem, right? I wonder if he puts up – I mean, what's the low that he could put up and keep his job? 30 points? I mean – This like, guy in 14, had, like, set records for, what, points per game at Georgia? And I'm that, like I'm just asking, right? Hudson there's Mason going to be at look, quarterback. I mean, look, I'm sorry. there's going, they there's going on to, now. Hudson Mason at quarterback, and he's putting up big numbers. There's going to be haters. That's what I'm trying to get at. There's, yeah, there's, it's there's and it, it goes. It goes one back thing. To, I was I was you know I was in school when he was, uh, was the too. offensive coordinator and yeah. like the early going. And I remember after he he got promoted from QB's coach, and it just he had some rocky moments early and there was a, there was a faction of the fan base that would not let it go. And and they didn't care if he got better and he's going to have to deal with those people uh, who, like you said, are probably not that happy that he's back as the offensive coordinator. They probably were fine. They were definitely fine with him being an analyst, giving ideas to the offensive coordinator. But if you're not trying, if, if you're trying to go with a seamless transition, then this, I mean, this makes way too much sense. In terms oh. of, in terms of uh, who these guys are, what their philosophy is, um, how familiar they are with the current, or how familiar Bobo is with the current system. I mean, uh, his experience just having done this for so long, the recruiting aspect Ben mentioned earlier makes way too much sense from all those standpoints. Um, you got to produce at the end of the day, and and I think you know with Monken, it was just you know. The, the bar is really, really high. I almost feel bad for Bobo in that respect. Like, I don't think whoever was coming in uh, to replace Monken, um, I mean, name a better offensive coordinator in college football at the present time than what Todd Monken did this past year. Nobody. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so I, 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 I think whoever was coming in was going to be dealing with absurd expectations. And this gives them the best chance to, at least in Kirby's eyes, I mean, We'll see what happens, but this gives this gives them the best chance in, in the head coach's eyes and and keeping everything uh you know the way it has been over the last couple of years. Well, there's two things about Bobo that I I haven't really mentioned. Number one, the offensive lines he will have are better than any of the ones that he had under Mark Richt because yep. Kirby himself, as a head coach, recruits offensive line like crazy. And then you have – they put a full-court effort on getting the best offensive linemen. Now, maybe the last class or so hasn't had that many, as many blue-chip studs when Pittman or even Matt Luke was here. But I will say that their offensive lines, they have the Monroe Freelings and all these guys that are like five-star players that are going to come in here. That's number one that's going to help him. He's going to have offensive lines. They're going to make it easier for him regardless of if he has a good or bad play call because they're going to have more time to throw the ball 
They're going to have bigger holes running the ball regardless of his play call. Number two, for the next three to four years, so let's say Bobo has a good four or five years in OC. Let's just say that. And the rest, average, whatever, whatever you want to call it. There's one quarterback recruit he has a direct tie-in with, and that's Dylan Rayola. Recruited him and was in contact with him more than Todd Munkin. He recruited Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford's obviously best friends with Dylan's dad and obviously has that long-term relationship. You give Mike Bobo, in my opinion, one of the three to four most talented high school quarterback prospects ever, and Dylan Rayola looks like Patrick Mahomes and Aaron Rodgers on film. He just does. You give him that guy, and Kirby gets a quarterback like Dylan Rayola, I mean, that's something that the next three years, you don't got to worry about offense. As long as you got the offensive lines in Rayola, you ain't got to worry that much about offense. It's going to be top five with him and those offensive lines. That's what it's going to be. You know what you do need to worry about, Ben? What? This is a problem. Goober Grape is – that's not that, – that, <laughs> No, that no. I'll take good. whatever crap you, you, you said. Peter nah. Pan, peanut butter. Yeah. I'll guys, take that over – This ain't uh, it. This ain't it. Like, at all. Look at Goober. <laughs> Dude, that's, the name alone. That's not it, guys. That's not it. Dude, that's like a SpongeBob name, like the Goofy Goober or something like that. Yeah. Bro, you're having SpongeBob, like peanut butter. Like, what are we doing here, man? I mean, we can we can go all night, folks. Uh, and and look, don't tread on me saying it's awesome. Andy, so that's awesome, guys. I don't. You guys, are, <laughs> you guys are. Andy said I'm buying some. I will not eat that shit, Andy. I promise you. If it looks if it looks Dude. anything close to what's in that jar right there on the far right, there's no shot I'm taking a bite of that. That looks like. No, 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 no. Um, but hey, to each his own, right? I like the Peter Pan. I'm a Peter Pan guy. Dude, yeah. man, I love how like you were like Team Andy, and within like a split second, no, get this guy out of here. He 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 agrees with don't trade on Andy. Me. Andy's turned on been, him and like Andy's been last time they turn on me. Andy's been uh, part of the family for a while, man. He knows we're just messing with him, but uh, yeah, you you can't do that, dude. You can't do that. I was looking while you guys were saying, you know, offenses and things like that. The only offense, which it, here's what's crazy, is Alabama wanted Bill O'Brien gone so bad, so bad. And they put up the fourth. They they tied Georgia for fourth in points per game at 41.1. I didn't – I mean, I don't watch every Alabama game, but for them to want him out so bad – it's pretty funny that they put up the uh, tied for fourth offense. It's it's expectations, and I know it's just it's just funny. It George is getting that. there, and, and it's it's a it's a good thing in, in a sense. But we're talking because, about like, we're, we're, but yeah. here's the thing: we're talking about the best offensive coordinator we think George has ever had, right? Oh yeah, they yeah, for up, sure. They put up forty one point one points per game, and then Alabama is wanting to literally buy a jet to send Bill O'Brien to Europe. And never come back. He can keep the jet, and they put the <laughs> keep the jet, yeah. They put the yeah. same amount of points per game. That's what happens yeah. when you don't win a national title two years in a row. Uh, yeah, you know, people funny, freak man. out. It's, yeah. it's, so the only other three teams that had a higher points per game than Georgia was uh, well, Alabama was tied. Southern Cal forty one point four, Ohio State forty four point two, and then Tennessee forty six point one. And Tennessee ha- Tennessee's offensive coordinator doesn't hype will call the plays up there anyway. Yeah, he does. Um. But yes. they're – hold up. Who is there? also did want to ask you guys this. Since you did bring up how Saban got new coordinators, if these two both flop, if uh, Steele and Tommy Reese, who they've had kind of up and down times depending on what school they've been at, they've been really good or kind of middle of the pack, average, average as grits. If these two coordinators don't pan out, and let's say Georgia did 3 P. Do you think Saban just hangs it up or like how long, what, what do you think it's going to take? Cause with me, I think he could retire next year. I think he could retire in 10 years. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if he has a whole nother. I don't think, that, sorry, go ahead. Keep going. I, I, I just don't think he has another full set of coordinator hires in him again. Like if he has to do this again, I, I don't think it, it, he might have two years with these guys, but if he has to do this again, I don't, I don't see it happening. Jason. I just think it all comes down to his energy level and, um, I, 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 I tend to disagree. I think if he still feels like he can win, no then he'll, he'll do it. But I mean, do you get the sense that his energy level is kind of going, yeah. going this way? 
Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of feel like I'm seeing it. Yeah. So if he retired next year or even if it was a long time, I wouldn't be shocked. That's the tricky thing, about which I think Georgia might use against them on the trail at this point is we got back-to-back titles and this head coach is getting older. Oh, yeah, you absolutely use that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 100%. So I'm not, I think going forward, unless NIL is that big, I, I, I think Georgia is going to start winning even more head-to-head against Alabama by a decent margin. I truly believe that. I think this class, I guess if I could have a way too early, like bold recruiting take, I think this is going to be the biggest separation between a Georgia class and a Bama class in Georgia's favor under Kirby head-to-head with Saban. With the way it's shaping up early for Georgia and with Bama, I was going through, I was talking to someone in the industry about it, and they're not in for as many five stars early on as they usually are, which is kind of surprising to me. So uh, just so you know, Tennessee got a new offensive coordinator. Uh, They promoted the quarterback coach to offensive coordinator. And Heupel said to ESPN's Chris Lowe that uh, he will call the plays next season and that Hazel, Hazel, something like that, would grow into the role, that role as we go which is very similar to what offensive coordinator Alex Golish did under Hypo, which he didn't call plays either. So Hypo is still calling the plays at Tennessee, but they did get a new uh, new OC, and that Alex Golish guy uh, left for – where did he go to? Well, where did you go? He's the head coach at USF now. So somebody asked – let's see here. Mike Brown said, is this a food show or a UGA football show? This is a fun show. Mike, that's what this is, brother. It's a fun show. We just here, there, everywhere. I'm glad you're here with us, Mike. Uh, F-bombs and peanut butter were not where I was expecting, like, that five minutes to turn. Like, we're going from Bobo into, oh, we got a censorship. We need uh, to talk about peanut butter. It's like, oh, boy. You know, it is what it is. You're the one that brought up both of those, actually. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, a little, for people who don't know, like, sometimes, like, Paul will text us, like, oh, we're doing the show tonight. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. And we go on. And it's like some of those shows, honestly, are probably our best ones. To be yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's just three guys kicking it, having a good time. We're here for an hour or so, and then we're out of your ear. Uh, just to give you guys a program notice, we're going to do a one show every other week leading up until we get to G-Day. Uh, we've kind of all three decided like, hey, we can – Put enough content out there for you guys to make it intriguing, but you don't have to be here with us every weekend unless, unless, and we said this too, unless there is something crazy like Mike Bobo, uh, you know, being the OC, um, you know, it, something like that. We would obviously come on for that Sunday, but we'll do every other week, uh, Sunday night until G Day. Then we'll be back full time uh, after G Day to walk you through spring and walk you through summer and walk you through transfers portal 2.0 i know ben loves transfer season uh, i love transfer season so i'm not just speaking for him jason you love transfer season yeah you, you transfer are you yeah are you a transfer guy jason i mean i have no choice these days no you do you can still you can still be anti-transfer i'm, 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 I'm pro i am pro transfer. player i'm pro player being able to make their choices to go wherever they want that's How it. many times? How many times can you do that? I mean, within reason. Oh, see, you are just like uh, you're just like the NCAA. Every case is different. Every circumstance. I mean, if wants to go wild, wild, one, I mean, wild, wild west established. Uh, it, it, it's it's like it, it, part. There's part of me that says, yeah, let them go transfer every every year to a different school. They go four years, four or five years, five schools, but then. I don't know. Those guys aren't going to play anyway that have to transfer every year. No, so I'm, I'm not really it. worried about them. I'm going to keep it. Like, is that than... Yabi and Noma? I'm pretty, who? Dude, he's, do, do you remember the, the five star recruit who was at Alabama? His name was Yabi and Noma or Yaki. I forget his oh, name. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He went from Alabama to Houston to like an UT Chattanooga to somewhere else to Michigan to now he's transferring again. This is like his fifth or sixth stop. In does six he, years, does he play? I was gonna say, does he? He's play? played somewhat, not at Bama, but he's he's either played or he's had like off field. And outside of at Bama, he was a backup, so he got pissed, and so he left there, and now he's been. It's just never ending. That's sometimes crazy. he's transferred twice in a year. <laughs> That's wild. That's I'm wild. Just, like what? Barely get to know your teammates' names at that point. You're like, hey, oh, see you later. I don't know. 
What do you think about NIL? Imagine him, well, imagine him if he ever made the NFL. What college did you go to? Well, uh, what? yeah, what's his Monday night? I gotta uh, look at my credits Monday, here. Monday nights, Monday night. No, it's Sunday night. Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sunday how how night many school. credits qualify to this being my college? Because like yeah. the most I have is like twelve 15 at this yeah, one, one school. <laughs> That's like a semester, right? I guess this one. Um. Oh, Martin, man, Martin, where you been? He said uh, Antonio Alfano did the same thing. I remember that. He went to like Colorado. Oh, where else did he go? Now he's at a JUCO. Is there is there a player that did that at Georgia recently? That's just Jeremiah up? Holman, I think. Yeah, where did he end up uh, by the? Uh, uh, he's playing Jeremiah. Was he went to ja- Did he go to Jacksonville State? No, 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 no. No, he Jeremiah went to like is... FIU or something. Yeah. FIU. That that's what it was. I don't know. And then he transferred there, again. Though. Did he? Yeah. he, oh, played he declared, somewhere. Yo, he declared for the draft. Now he declares for the JJ Holloman. Let's see here. If he was innocent, that's one where oh. if he was playing for Georgia in 2019, he would have helped that offense. For Look here. As it Look was here. Enough. Look here. JJ Holloman trans he left Florida International and played last year at Tennessee State. Tennessee State for him. I'm trying to think. There was a defensive back. There was a defensive back Georgia had. Oh my God, it's gonna. You know, D'Angelo Gibbs is at South Carolina now. Yeah, that that D'Angelo's been. Wait, I saw that. I almost crapped myself. I'm like, there's no way this guy could still. Play. It's not there's Gibbs no though, way. um, and it's not Devon Wilson. He was How in. What year class. is he in his sixth year? This has to be a sixth year, right? Yeah, Gibbs. Oh, yeah. He was yeah. from his class. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Man. Yeah, what he was from his class. Yeah. Somebody help me out. The, That's twenty. Is this his seventh year? It's the, it's the, yeah, it's something like that. Help this me out. How does he have seven years? Well, you know, some, somebody gets seven, some gets eight, some gets nine. Did, did you see the guy from Oregon who is like, he's older than Stetson by a year and he's got two additional years of eligibility. And then yeah, but then he, but North the, Texas with who's 30. But, who but also the guy from football. Oregon also left, by the way. Um, he transferred out of Oregon. They're going to have him be like a part-time like defensive coordinator and like, player at the same time dude what was his name guy? man he played did you say he played trey at bishop was it trey bishop no it was like 2016 maybe uh oh, so this is a player under rick yeah he was oh my god it's gonna drive me crazy he was a really good defensive back never showed up at georgia though and then just like it's not chad clay I'm the dad joseph no, this is gonna drive me that, insane. That, that's in blast. I'm gonna remember it too when we get off of here, and I'm gonna be like, "Damn it, that was him." Um, Hold on, I might have to find. I'm trying this. to remember the all you the way back. Treats. There was one. There was one man, and it was like around. Are you sure it's DB? Yeah, it was a DB, and it, it <laughs> Andy's was... right about JT Daniels. I mean, yeah, JT did. Transfer. Gosh, he's he's made Chad it all the way around. Clay? No, it wasn't Chad Clay. Anyways, I'm not gonna remember it. I'm not going to. It's it's not gonna happen. No, oh, there it is. Nadab Joseph. I said the dab. Ben Joseph. said Nadab Joseph. Oh, you did? Yeah. Yes. And he My went bad. to like he signed. He never showed up. He went to like Nebraska. He where is he at? Juco, He went to like two JUCOs or something. Yeah. Let's see where he's at now. I remember like nobody even heard about him talking to Georgia. And then all of a sudden, this guy is committed and signed with Georgia on signing day. And then he never shows up. That was probably one of the funniest recruitments. Wow. So he went to Independence Community College. Then so was no, that was the last chance at you. Sophomore in 2020. 2021, he played in two games at Nebraska. There is no 2022 stats for uh, Nadab Joseph. He was supposed to be really good. That was a big – that was a huge battle, guys, between Georgia and Alabama. He was committed to Bama for a while. And then he, he – uh, he flipped out of nowhere. Out he wouldn't even think Georgia was like in it for him. Yeah, that's who's, um, who's that one guy who like signed with Georgia and he left like after like two weeks. I think it was Chauncey Manock. Oh yeah, well he went to he went to uh, community college too. He was a weird one because like he signed with Georgia. Well, no, he went to ULL. Like three weeks anyway. later, I'm out of here. I don't know. We could go on about this forever. I'm just glad I found that. There, there are some funny names because that was gonna that was gonna drive me crazy, uh, guys. Last thoughts uh, before we get back to these people in 14 days and and talk to them again. What you got, Jason? Oh man, uh, just uh, it doesn't seem like anybody in the chat is is upset about Bobo, so I'm preaching to the choir. But you know, for those who are, uh, give the guy a shot. I think he'll be pleasantly surprised given the resources he has this time. 
compared to last time. And even then, last time he was lighting it up in 13 and four, 12, 13 and 14. So uh, I think, um, I think he'll be pleasantly surprised given like what he did then and the talent he has at Georgia now. Um, you know, I think you're, I think George is still in good hands with, with Mike Bobo as the offensive coordinator. What you got, Benny boy? Yeah, I, I could see him sentiment to Jason. He got an offense cornerback who's a former quarterback at the school and former OC for some of the most prol- prolific offenses ever, and probably two of your most talented quarterbacks ever, Matthew Stafford and Aaron Murray. And just to get that guy back in the building after having a year to really, you know, learn under Tom Munkin and just be back in, you know, at the school and university and around the players, and now he's back. I think – he fits everything for Georgia, and I, I don't see the need to get upset now that he's in a situation where his son's on the team. We didn't bring that up. His son's on the team. Oh, yeah. yeah. His family's all from here. You know, you look at it and you say this is kind of a place that I think he's going to be happy at. His health is the best it's been in many years. I think that this situation just much better than being under two head coaches for one, for like half a year that – we're going to get fired or got fired. Man, I'd love to hear him just be candid about what it was like to work for Brian Harson. Right. Oh, yeah. I think, uh, like you said, Jason, nobody in the chat tonight. I was, I wanted to kind of gauge the temperature of the chat. Nobody in the chat tonight was, was hating on Bobo. I think everybody's kind of looking forward to it. Sure. You wanted to keep Munkin, but we all knew that wasn't going to be a reality forever. He wasn't going to be here. I went through his stops He's he's been you know three places for over three years. The rest of them, excuse me, less than that. So he's a he's a traveling man. You bring Bobo back, like Ben said last year. He gets to sit around, help out with the offensive game plan, learn this, learn this team basically, and then uh, you know <laughs> it's throwing me off here. Mike Brown says, yeah, uh, that's what I was. Re- I'm reading yeah, the comments. He said y'all are very good at talking dog football, just not good food critics. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I'm telling you right now, if you're a Goober great fan, brother, you can get out with Andy as well. And that's fine. Uh, but no, uh, I think I think this is good for Georgia, right? You you get to keep it in house, and I think you're going to definitely have some fans that are not happy with it. But at the end of the day, you know it, it's recency bias. I think is what's hurting Bobo with but that Auburn stop and that South Carolina, uh, South Carolina, South Carolina stop. Uh, recency bias is kind of hurting Bobo. But if you go back to where you did in 2014 with Georgia, I think you'd be presently, you know, kind of happy with getting him again. So, uh, Andy, you know it's all love, man. You know it's all love. But, guys, if you missed any of this, it'll be on YouTube. It'll also be up on where you wherever you get your podcasts from, so you can listen to the entirety of it. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube and you made it this far, put in the comment section, what's your favorite peanut butter? We'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at it in two weeks from now. But, guys, as always, we appreciate you so much for watching. And, uh, Ben, you want to send us out of here? Do you know how to do that? No. I'm just okay. going to salute you all and say have a good one. <laughs> all right. See you, guys. Thanks so much for watching. You've been watching the Sunday call Show presented by UGA Sports. I'm Paul Meharry, Jason Butt, Ben Choppy Bachman. We'll see you next time.